Today I want to share a little bit about what's going on here in the Texas Hill Country. We haven't seen weather like this since 1949. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Well, I'm not doing any cooking today because we have no power, but I wanted to share a little bit with you about what's been going on here in the Texas Hill Country. We haven't seen weather like this, apparently to what the weatherman has told us, since 1949. We've had some cold snaps here and there where maybe we had a little ice, but then the next day it was 70 degrees or something like that. But we have had a week long of cold weather. We've been in the single digits. Uh, two nights ago it was uh, five degrees above zero. And I know to a lot of people in other parts of the country, we sound silly but we're just not used to weather like this. Our normal temperatures in February are usually around 60 degrees. So when it's five degrees, and then with a wind chill factor that's taking us below zero, it's very unusual. And then it's topped off with ice, then a snowstorm, then more ice, and we're supposed to get more ice. And I think we had ice last night, we're supposed to get more ice and snow tonight. Uh, everything is closed and uh, the roads are impassable. Many roads are closed. And we went two days about without any power. And now we're sort of on this rolling power thing where sometimes power will come on for like 20 minutes and then it'll go off for hours. And so it's just really been quite an event. But I thought you would get a kick out of seeing my garden. I mean, normally this time of year, we're, we've already got our tomato plants in and things like that, but there's no doing any of that right now. But if you've seen my previous video where I uh, gave you a tour of my garden you know, when my son was home, I think this was like last spring, but I thought you'd find this amazing to see. I don't know if you can see, this is a tree behind me. This is a, um, uh, is it Great Myrtle? Not Great Myrtle, it's the, um, a weeping yopon and boy is it <laughs> weeping it's oh it's actually over our table this is normally a lot higher like way up to the top of the house but it's just if you can see this it is just laden down laden down with ice it's so heavy i don't know if these branches will be able to recover even after the ice melts, it's just been weighted down. Normally, if we did get some ice, you know, it you know, might just be like one day and then everything melts and then the trees just sort of bounce back. But this has been a week like this. So I don't know if these are gonna recover, but here, here's my, oh, I'll try to, I'm, my, my sweet husband is recording this at the phone, so I'll try to stay uh, forward so you can hear me, but. You may remember my raised beds. Well, everything is just covered. There's the snow. First, we, we have like this sheet of ice. And then on top of that, we got about a half a foot of snow. And then on top of the snow, we got more ice. So you'll see, it's, it's like so hard. Look at that. It's all ice now. It was just sort of this real puffy snow. But all of my, uh, you know, because we can kind of grow here all year long, but not this year. <laughs> and then my Texas tarragon, you may remember that over there. Uh, I mean, it'll come back, it'll, you know, because it'll grow up from the bottom, but it's all uh, just been frozen. You can see my peppers maybe over there in the distance. <laughs> we had picked a whole bunch. Uh, when our son was home, he picked a whole bunch before the storm so that was good so we've got a bunch of those drying in the kitchen but yeah everything it's just just topped with ice and uh, and it's amazing even just walking on it but i so look forward to once all of this melts because you're going to laugh when i tell you this but so we've got tonight is going to be rough tomorrow night is going to be rough Finally on Friday, all the precipitation will stop uh, and the temperature will creep up a little bit on Friday and Saturday. But then by Sunday, they're telling us we should be in the 70s. <laughs> it's hard to believe. And then all this will melt and then it'll be time to 
get to working in the garden. I'm really looking forward to sharing some garden videos with you. I have been so inspired by my friend Kay, who if you've not visited her channel, it's called Late Bloomer and she's all about gardening and she's recently moved from California to Tennessee. She's got a beautiful homestead in Tennessee and she has just really been inspiring me uh, to do even more gardening. So I look forward to really kicking up this garden and growing a lot of things that I can then preserve. We can make ferments together. We can do some canning together. Hopefully we'll have a lot of fun together once all this melts. <laughs> but the good news is even, you know, we've struggled with all of this weather. Uh, often here in central Texas, we do struggle with droughts, you know, especially in the hot summers. So hopefully this will keep our lakes nice and full and uh, put some good moisture in the ground that we, we always need here. So I think that'll be great. But it's it's been an adventure, you know, almost two days without any power. And uh, we had the fireplace, we have two fireplaces, we had the fireplaces going and just trying to stay warm. And I, something I have to tell you that I'll do another video on this, but you know, I have the Prepper Pantry series where I talk about how to be prepared and whatnot. And that I'm glad that I, I am in that uh, uh, Prepper Pantry mindset, you know, to be prepared. But when things like this happen, and it's, it's so true because other people have talked about this as well, that when a situation like this presents, presents itself, you learn all of the little holes that are, so to speak, in your preps. And I really saw all the little holes that I had. But one thing I'm so grateful for that my mother always taught me, make sure you have five to six wool blankets per person. <laughs> We grew up, I grew up in New York, you know, so I grew up back east and my mother was always very good. She was always prepared. And so I can't say enough about making sure you have some wool blankets if you live in an area uh, where this can, this happens on a regular basis or even, you know, occasionally like with us. So it's definitely been very interesting uh, to learn these things uh, about, uh, you know, where you can improve in terms of being prepared you never know what's going to happen we could have never anticipated this but now i know now i know we can go into single digits and we can get a lot of ice and we can lose power you know so there's a I, i've learned a lot of valuable lessons from this but it's going to be great when all of this starts to melt we can get in the garden start growing things again uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, I've got a lot of fun plans. We'll do a lot of ferments. I know a lot of you have been asking me about more ferments. We're definitely going to do that and definitely do canning. And so we'll have a lot of fun. And I wanted to let you know that, yes, so many of you have emailed me. I think there's just been this real resurgence of interest in rye bread. So I will definitely be doing some uh, baking and taking you along with me. And we'll make uh, a light rye, we'll make a dark rye like a pumpernickel, and we'll definitely do them with sourdough. And so we'll have a lot of fun with that. And I have good news to tell you that it has gone as low in our house, as low as 47 degrees when we were out of power for an extended period of time. And I am shocked, but my sourdough starter just kept kicking along. And I, you know, I'd feed it and it would rise even under such cool temperatures. So that's given me a lot of hope for those of you who have shared with me that sometimes you feel you can't find like a cozy area uh, for your starter. I think once they kind of get going and are a little on the mature side, it's amazing how well they can survive. So, but in any event, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, with you, with everything that's been going on. We have, oh, you can see all the icicles coming off the gutter and you know, all the snow on our roof. And even way up on one of our chimneys up there, you can see all the icicles. And it's just amazing. It's The ice on the trees is beautiful to see, uh, but at the same time, you, you just worry. We Oh yeah, and, and in the front of the house, we had a lot of branches come down, but we had a wonderful neighbor who helped my husband 
uh, with the saw uh, to get some of that were, you know, like dangling and especially over our roof. So it's so nice that we have, it's, we live in such a lovely community and everybody really bands together and helps each other. And that, that's just so precious, you know, to us. You really, it's really priceless. Uh, but we had, yeah, we had a lot of branches down. Uh, so the fellas had to take care of that and especially the ones over the roof so we feel a little safer um, but yeah this is really this has been I think for many of us uh, here at least here in Texas you know I grew up you know in the Northeast so I lived through nor'easters and three feet of snow and you know 20 below and all that sort of thing but I think for a lot of us here in Texas, this might be just a once in a lifetime experience. Hopefully this type of thing won't be coming back anytime soon. You can see even these big trees, they're all completely covered with, uh, with icicles. It's amazing, uh, just all the branches, everything. But in any event, I just looking around, I just get, uh, I am just in awe of it all. But in any event, I just wanted to come on and share all of this with you. And uh, I look forward to uh, getting back in the kitchen once I have power and we'll start cooking again. But in the meantime, if, uh, if you're working on being prepared and you want a, a series of uh, videos, I have a playlist all about how to be prepared in terms of uh, prepping your pantry with real food. You don't have to worry about buying any unusual things just real food that you can get at your grocery for grocery store and how to do it on five dollars a week so be sure to click on this video over here and i've got the whole playlist storage ideas uh, when to use silica gel packs when to use oxygen absorbers i cover all of it and i'll see you over there in my warm hopefully texas hill country kitchen love and god bless